and I'm really grateful to be part and parcel of Sitam Nakuru. I want us to open our Bibles in 1 Timothy chapter 6. So what a great joy to be here and to bring forth the Word of God in a few minutes that we have. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 13, the Bible says, In the sight of God who gives life to everything, and of Jesus Christ who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time, God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in an approachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and mighty forever. And the church said, Amen. This was Paul's letter to Timothy. And there is a lot that he told Timothy, but today we focus on chapter 6, where we see the final charge to Timothy. It's a doxology, which means a praise to God, a worship to God, which could be given in various forms. And this being our day of worship, therefore, we have come here to worship we have a call to worship God in this generation or even this day. A man called St. Augustine said, You, meaning God, have made us for yourself. Meaning, oh God, you have made us for yourself. We are here and we were created that we may worship God in everything that we have. But for us to do that, we need to know God. And know that he deserves all our worship. Worship comes from an, from an old English word, which means worship, which means worship. In other words, it's the action the human beings do in expressing homage to God because he is worthy of it. When we talk about homage, we talk about respect and honor. In fact, the word worship comes from a, a word that means making sure that you bow until your head is under the waist. Could we stand up? Uh, because we even have children today and the youth. Could we stand up and do that? Making sure that your head goes beyond your waist in worship to worshiping the King of Kings. Worshiping the great I am, the Lord Almighty. That is what worship is all about. We can have our seats. Paul talked about God, the blessed and only ruler, the king of kings, the lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in an approachable light. In other words, you cannot see God and live. We know that from Exodus chapter 33, where Moses had to be hidden in a cleft of a lock so that God will pass and then he would see God from behind. And many other people in the Bible who would say, I will die because I have seen the great I am. Today we come here because of him and he is worthy to be worshipped by us. He is worthy to be lifted up. Homage means that you bring honor and respect to him. Homage means that you recognize and acknowledge that he is the only God. You revere him. You honor him with respect in everything you are. In fact, if many people of Uhuru Kenyatta would come today, they would be greeting him nearly from the ground because of the homage, because he's the president of this country. I don't know whether you remember in the Solai, when he visited Solai after the dam uh, broke forth, there is a lady he touched. You remember what she did? She couldn't believe she went learning and doing many other things because he is the president. Today we come to break before the king of kings that he may have his power over us. He is in control of everything that we are doing. He is the one who holds your healing. He is the one who holds your family. He is the one who holds even your children. He is the Lord. And so we have come here to worship him. Are you willing to break before the Lord and show that he is worthy to be worshipped and to be exalted? Our interaction with God. We are coming to approach God. We are coming so that he may speak to us today. But there is a lot of misunderstanding.
standing to worship today. Many people believe that we worship God uh, by doing and by offering things to God. That if I give to the Naivasha church plant, that is all gone and I am very grateful. And I pray that all of us will continue giving. But that is not enough. God is calling you to break forth before him and allow him to be the Lord and your Savior. That is the true act of worship. Remember Jesus with the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4, where he was telling the woman, and he told the woman a few things about worship. The first one is Samaritans did not know whom they were worshiping. And so you could be here and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know the God that you should worship. We are not worshiping because we have only come. We are worshiping him because he is our God. He is our king. He holds our life. He holds our present and our future. Amen. So do you know him? You know whether you know him or you don't know him. Do you hold on to him? Are you with him or without? You already know. But the only thing you can do is to know him today. The invisible God, the blessed, the ruler, the king of kings and the lord of lords. He is able to save and even to sustain. God is looking for true worshipers who will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. According to John chapter 4 verse 23. He is seeking those true worshipers today that will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And how can you do that? It's only by allowing Jesus to have a place in your life. Worshiping in the power and in the enablement of the Spirit of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 18, For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth is through came through Jesus Christ. Verse 18, no one has seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father and has made him known. The only way you can worship God is to know Jesus Christ. It's only through that relationship that you will be able to understand God and worship him for who he is. We don't only worship him for the things he has done, we worship him for the thing, for who he is, and for what he is able to do. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 14. We see that worship needs to lead to obedience and praise to God in every sphere of our life. Keeping the command without spot and blame until the appealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Obeying the command without wavering. And that is why we, we sing and say that, uh, that we bow before the King of Kings because of who he is. Bowing down before him. In fact, we keep singing again that, Lord, you deserve it. Take my everything. You deserve to be worshipped today. Whom are you paying homage to? Today, do you know him? He is God. Is he your savior? Do you know him? Do you pay homage to him? You know, in the political scene, we are treated with many things that happen. You see people refusing to greet other people or even acknowledge a, pleasant, a president who is already chosen. Even yesterday, we see somebody walk out of the meeting because they could not condone what was being said. Today I ask you, whom do you pay homage to? Did you come here and you will walk out the same way you came? In protest, saying that I cannot give uh, my career. I cannot give my money. I cannot give my, the whole of my life to him. The Lord is calling us that we may live a life of obedience to his command. Giving our everything to him. The Samaritans, Jesus said, they worshipped him that they did not know. Do you know him today? Let us all stand up as we worship the Lord this evening or this afternoon. And as I ask you, do you know him? And if you want to know him, this is the light place to be. You can walk to the front as we continue singing. 
Are things already broken in your life and you're wondering who will give you hope? You can still walk. The elders and the pastors are here and they will pray with you. In fact, are you able to sing the song, I give myself away that you may use me. Take my life, take my everything that I may honor you. Do you know him? Whom are you going to pay homage to? Is it to a, a witch doctor? Is it even to your relatives for a job? Is it even to other authorities? Today I ask you, as we go down together, let's pay homage to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who holds our life. Let's all go together as we pay homage. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Amen.